Day with the Rock of Ages Radio Hour. All right, we are back. Sax in the morning here, joined by Jersey Joe for our weekly college football segment. Joe, let's start it off with the Iron Bowl out in Alabama. Tuscaloosa, the University of Alabama, picking up a huge revenge victory over Auburn and, you know, moving themselves now into the SEC championship game and just one win away from the college football playoff. The Iron Bowl is always one of my favorite just matchups in college football. It always, I mean, the last two years, the matchups has been incredible. I mean, last year you had the return against Auburn, uh, the return Auburn had against Alabama in their place, which was amazing. And then this year, the game didn't disappoint. The kick six. The kick six. They mentioned that a lot in the game. Now, I'm going to be honest, Ian. My dreams were crushed again. Auburn's done that a lot to me this season, but my hopes were up. They played a tremendous first half. I mean, the way that the first half ended when they hit Duke Williams for the... I mean, was it uh, Sammy Coates or Duke Williams? I forget which one, but one of them had that just terrific catch, set them up for a field goal at the end of the at, at the first half. Things were going really, really well for the Auburn Tigers. I mean, their offense was definitely showing that they were back on track, but it was just defense. I mean, the, defensively, they just were embarrassing in this game. They fired their defensive coordinator, Ellis John, yesterday rightfully so I mean let's look at the numbers here Ian it's not a, um, a fact they weren't hiding what they're trying to do Bla- Blake Sims to Amari Cooper 13 receptions 224 yards and three touchdowns they just they had no answer for him I mean there were some coverages where he was just all alone Amari Cooper how do you leave the guy all alone he is not hard to miss he's the best receiver in college football I mean Auburn just in their secondary has had breakdown after breakdown week after week. It looked like they had a, they had things figured out in the first half, and then it just all deteriorated. Deteriorated, and Auburn's got to get some defense, and they made the right move. They had to fire Ellis Johnson after this game because it was just an embarrassment. Cooper is a guy that, if there's anybody on when you're playing defense, if there's anybody that you have to know where he is on the field, it's Cooper. Yes. And as you were saying, he's kind of an important guy to pay attention to. Yeah, a little bit. You know, just a little bit. I don't know, Ian. What do you think for the SEC championship game? Because for me, I think it's a blowout. I think Alabama is light years ahead of Missouri. Missouri, very good defense, but I don't like their offense at all. Matty Mock, ugh. I don't like him. I think... The way that Alabama was able to just generate so much offense yes. in the second half here, you know, scoring 13 points in the third quarter and then 21 in the second quarter, 34 second half points against an Auburn team that I think is better than Miss- than Missouri. I don't see how they cannot feel so confident going into this SEC championship game. Now, I do I don't think it's going to be as lopsided as you're predicting. I think Missouri will put up a fight, but just looking back to last year, Missouri having the best running defense yes. in the nation and then getting run all over by Trey Mason and Auburn. High-scoring football game. I I just think that they cannot contain Amari Cooper and the Alabama defense. I I mean, Alabama offense. I'm with you. I mean, it says a lot about Blake Sims, too, because that was a rough first half that he had. Those three interceptions were bad. Nick Saban, you saw Jay Coker warming up on the sidelines. They were going to take Blake Sims out of that game but you give them a lot of credit for sticking with him because he was locked in in that second half and you got to say that about Blake Sims all year it hasn't always been pretty especially in the first half but the guy when you've needed him to step up and make the plays I mean he's consistently done it every time you needed it from him so you give Blake Sims a lot of credit there because he's been a money quarterback he really has when I was watching this game and it was yeah, I think 31 uh, 33 to 21 and 
Auburn was leading, and I was thinking to myself, wow, you know, they, they are they going to beat Alabama two years in a row? Yeah. But then Alabama flipped the switch, and just like that, boom, 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 boom five straight scoring drives, five straight touchdowns, and just said, no. They turned it, they completely turned the table, and... I think that is why I I am so confident that they are going to win the SEC championship because of just the momentum that they're taking from that and moving it into this coming week. I, I really don't see how the Missouri Tigers can stop them. I'm with you. and it's, it's kind of a first we've seen from Alabama because their kind of identity has always been just a solid, outstanding defense, tough, hard nose. They didn't really need an explosive offense because their defense was so good. They just needed to run the ball, not turn the ball over on offense. And we saw, I mean, Greg McElroy and A.J. McCarron, very good quarterbacks, but more of your game-managing type guys. They relied on the running game, didn't turn the ball over. I think Blake Sims is probably the most dynamic quarterback they've had in a while and their offense is definitely just they can score faster than they've been able to in years and I, I think it going into the playoff this year and especially in the SEC we've seen more and more of these of def- offensive shootout games a lot of these SEC games have been shootouts this year so I think Alabama is really needed to do that and kind of change their identity become more of an offensive team that could score when they really need points and that's going to be big for them moving into the playoff Agreed. I, I think just looking at the way that you, at, I, I couldn't have put it better myself. Myself, they relied on running and defense in their previous, you know, championship seasons. Now they have that high high powered quarterback wide receiver offense. Still with that great defense, I I really don't see how Alabama is going to lose to one to Missouri and two really in the in the first game of the of the playoff. Yeah. I really see them being right there in the championship game. Now, we you know, we, we talked a lot about how they were able to get to how they're in the SEC championship game and matching up with the Missouri Tigers. Now, the of course, by winning on Saturday night, they were able to get there. But actually, they clinched the SEC West before that with Mississippi State losing the Egg Bowl to Ole Miss. Uh, I don't know. It's kind of weird because... I kind of fell off with Mississippi State the last couple weeks. I mean, they had that stretch where they were just unbelievable, where they beat Auburn, LSU, Arkansas, uh, Kentucky, and that Texas stretch, A&M. Texas A&M as well, right? And they were unbelievable in that stretch. But after that, I don't know, especially Dak Prescott, things kind of started getting out of whack. He was throwing a lot of interceptions. Offensively, they weren't as sharp. And I just think it was kind of, they lost a lot of momentum after that stretch. And in this game, I mean, it kind of was set up perfectly. Ole Miss doesn't put up any points against Arkansas the week before. This is a huge game. They got up and they were just the better team in this game. There's no way to, no other way around it. You know, this I feel like this opened the door for so many teams. It did it to get into the chaos. playoffs. If if Mississippi State just simply won this game, I think that there's really no way that you can keep them out of the playoffs. There wasn't no. There's no way, which really made it so easy for the committee. You provided provided Alabama. Oregon and Florida State all win their conference championships. It just rolled up so nicely for the committee. But now, now let's start the debate. I mean, I'm going to say my hand is forced. That's how I feel with number four because I, I wanted to put Ohio State, but with JT Bear, which just tragic, just uh, so feel really bad for the kid because 
I, I've, be, I've become such a fan watching him grow. I mean, week one when they when they barely got by against Navy, and then week two when they lost to Virginia Tech, his turnaround, his progression has just been outstanding. The kid is a phenomenal quarterback. Can't say enough about how good I think he's going to be. So it's really unfortunate for Ohio State because I think that they deserve every opportunity to get that four spot. The reason I didn't have TCU there with Ohio State was because no championship game. Now, that's not, not TCU's fault. It's their conference. But when you have a team that's got to play that extra game, even if it's in a week or Big Ten, I still think they get the edge. But with Ohio State, without JT Barrett, I, I just don't think realistically, even though they might still win the Big, Big Ten Championship game, you can put them in. I think your hand, my hand, is kind of forced with putting TCU at that four spot. You know, we're kind of making the assumption that Ohio State's going to win the Big Ten. Yes. Wisconsin is a very oh, good football team. Melvin Gordon, I mean, they have outstanding, one of the best running te- games in college football. And really, it would not surprise me at all. And I could re- kind of see this, it, that Wisconsin takes the Big Ten title game. I mean, you have to think, how demoralizing is it for you if you're Ohio State? I mean, the way you climbed and clawed back, JT Barrett, I mean, they didn't have one. After the Virginia Tech game, they were in the driver's seat in every game they played. Full command, I mean, just... I mean, they had a stretch, the five games after Virginia Tech, they had a five-game stretch where they had five to- games in a row with 500 yards of total offense. Unstoppable, really. Michigan, it was a little bit of a hiccup here and there uh, for the first stretch, and then JT Bear got hurt, obviously. But again, at the end of the game, they were in full command as well. So I would think you're right, Is you've got to be a little demoralized here. But I just think Urban Meyer is just the ultimate X factor. Him and Nick Saban are two guys I never pick against. Now, I, I'm with you. I think that this is just a potential. Wisconsin's got every chance to win this game, but I still think a part of me is going to lean towards Ohio State here. I think that Ohio State has the emotional tie to it, you know, yeah. to win it for Barrett, to win it for the the player who, who committed suicide who, who's bo- whose body was just found right and you so you know I, I think that they have all those extra emotional factors off the football field that that really will help to catapult them in this game but when you look at the x's and o's of it i think wisconsin matches up very well with ohio state and it, it would not shock me at all if they win this now that would create a very interesting debate between tcu and baylor it would and i think a lot of people are clinging their hat to the fact that baylor did beat tcu but i i just i'm not a fan of baylor i really am not i mean their offense is outstanding. Bryce Petty is a very good quarterback. Our Bryles has got full command of the offense there, but their schedule is very weak. Really not a lot of games against big teams. Now, I think TCU had to go out in this Texas game and just blow the door. I mean, 48 to 10, really in full command here. But Texas is a good football team, really gained a lot of momentum in the final weeks of the season. They had to come in this game and just dominate because with no championship game, their final two games, they play Iowa State next week. Baylor plays Kansas State, which is also a very good football team. So that's going to be a tough matchup for Baylor. I think TCU is set in stone. They're not going to lose another game. Baylor, this could be big for them because Bryce Petty did have the concussion in the game, so we're still waiting on his status. But the two of them, it's going to come down to the wire. I would still go with TCU, though. Even though they still lost the game against Baylor, it really was just kind of a defensive breakdown at the end. I just think from what I've seen all year, I just have more faith on both sides of the ball with the TCU Horn Frogs. I don't really think that it's going to be too much of a big deal because I actually think Kansas State is going to beat Baylor. Yeah. Which will just settle it all. It'll just, yeah. It, hopefully they'll do that and just make the job easier for us. I really hope they do. Because, uh, you know, I, I'm 
I'm very impressed with the Kansas State football program. It's starting with the with the year that they were you know, in the in the top five and and undefeated until late November. Uh, it, it, the, it was the Oregon and Kansas State that year. Yeah, yeah. the the year when Colin Klein really had a had a phenomenal season. Ever since then, Kansas State really has stood out to me as just one of those solid, solid programs that will typically fly under the radar, but they'll put up a non-win season. And it's like, wow, Kansas State is that good? Yeah, they are that good. And I think that, you know, they have a an opportunity to yet again prove themselves as, yeah, we are a pretty good f- f- um, program here. And I think they're going to do that because, as you said, I have not been impressed with Baylor at all this year. And really, I haven't really been impressed with TCU either. But, you know, TCU's got... There's a little bit more there to work with. There's a little bit more there to work with. And TCU has Iowa State this yes. week, which is certainly an easier game than Baylor against Kansas State. And I think it says a lot about, like you were just saying with Kansas I mean, Bill Snyder, the thing I kind of look at is... With what you have to work with and what he has done with that program is remarkable because before he got there, Kansas State was just a mess. I mean, I think when you look at co- coaches like Pat Fitzgerald with Northwestern and then you look at Bill Snyder with Kansas State, those are guys who just get every ounce out of what they have to work with. They're not going to get the recruits that the other big schools in the Big 12 and the Big 10 get, but they utilize their assets. They maximize their assets. They are fundamentally sound. Don't turn the ball over. And, I mean, they just really get so much out of their teams. And I think it just says so much about them as coaches because they're dealing with – they don't have the tools that everyone else has to work with, but they get everything they can out of their teams, and they're just outstanding football coaches, especially Bill Snyder. Couldn't have put it better myself. Bill Snyder has established such a good program in Kansas State that you know it. It, it would only be fitting if if they uh, add to you know what what Snyder's already been able to accomplish there by knocking off Baylor and bumping them out of the the playoff discussion now real quickly two teams when we're talking you know playoffs and conference championships and everything uh two teams that we have to at least touch on oregon and florida state you know numbers two and three right now uh we'll start off with oregon the ducks matching up with arizona arizona I did not see that coming. No, Rich Rodriguez, you give him a ton of credit. He's done a fantastic job. I mean, before the season, I mean, you could see their their program starting to get a little bit of momentum. But, look, the, if you told me that this they were going to have a season like this, I, I wouldn't have believed. But Rich Rodriguez, he's done a terrific job. They're a very good football team. They beat Oregon at home this year in Eugene. I mean, no one, none of us saw that one coming. They're just a very good football team, and it's going to be a, a heck of a good Pac-12 champ game. I think because of that little fact, Oregon's going to win big. I think, I think so too. Just based on the way, and the big thing for Oregon is in that game. That was kind of when they still had a lot of injuries on the offensive line. Um, and now they've kind of stabilized that a little bit. The offensive line still got its holes, but it's definitely in better shape now than it was when they lost to Arizona a couple weeks ago. So I think that fact alone is a big part of it. And Marcus Marriott is just in the zone right now. He had that bye two weeks ago to rest him up a little bit. I think I'm with you. I think Oregon is just going to get it done pretty big. I think there's no way that Oregon is going to lose twice to the same team. No. No way. And, you know, coming into this game, they know what Arizona can do, and they're just going to say, you know what, we fell for it once, we're not going to do it again. This is why we're number two in the country. Absolutely. Now, another team... You know, jumping over to Florida State now, they've got a very good Georgia Tech team in the ACC championship game. 
And many people, as you said earlier, including Danny Cannell, are looking at Georgia Tech as playing the role of spoiler. Yeah, it's going to be a very good game. And I think finally Georgia Tech will get the attention from people that they deserve because for the last two years, their head coach, Paul Johnson, he's done an outstanding job with this football team. If I had to compare them to a team for people, I would say Auburn because they're a very up-tempo offense. They run an option-type offense, run the ball very, very well, dual-threat quarterback in Justin Thomas, and he's very good. I mean, he runs the ball well. He, he's gotten better in the passing game, kind of like Nick Marshall. Last year, he was much more of a runner. He's expanded his skill set and is more of a passer now so they're a very good football team Georgia Tech and the thing that Jandy Cannell said this morning which I think is most important is they eat up the clock when they're on offense and if you do that against Florida State and with the way James Winston threw three picks in the first quarter against Florida he has not looked too sharp he's thrown a lot of picks this year if he does have that problem this game with the way Georgia Tech eats up and controls time of possession. That's going to be a recipe for a disaster for Florida State. What I look at in this game is, you know, so many people are saying Georgia Tech, you know, can really play the role of spoiler. And Florida State, of course, everybody knows the storyline there. They haven't lost, but they have not looked good at all. And Georgia Tech coming off of that big win against Georgia last week. What would not surprise me is if Florida State completely turns the table, put, turns in that a sensational uh, you know, performance and shows this is why we're the defending national champions. This is why we are ranked number three. This is why we are undefeated and completely uh, you know, runs through Georgia Tech. Will that happen? I don't think so. I think it's going to be as typical Florida State game, they, you know, maybe even they they trail all throughout the first half, third quarter very close, back and forth, fourth quarter come away with a very close victory. I'm with you. I mean, I think Florida State will win the game as well, but I mean, I, I remember saying in like week four, I'm still, okay, Florida State hasn't lost a game, but I'm still waiting for them to remind me that they're the defending national champions. And it's the final week, and I'm still saying, I'm still waiting for Florida State to remind me that they're the defending national champions. It's been ugly, but they found ways to win. I, I just think there's nothing else you could expect from this game. It'll be ugly. It's probably going to be a very close game. Georgia Tech is going to have every opportunity to win. But at the end of the day, Florida State has just shown you they've found ways to get the win. I think that trend will continue, and they'll win once again. But... That luck's not going to work when they get to the playoff. It will be a very interesting championship weekend. And, of course, uh, you know, playoff in, in j- one month from today are the semifinals. Looking one month it. from today. Cannot wait. Joe, it has been a blast with you. Every Monday morning. Unfortunately, this is the last one of the year. It is. Uh, yeah, Joe's got his final sports vault of the year of the 2014 calendar year coming up in just over just about 40 minutes from now. I'll be back with my fi- for the final time this semester on Friday, and looking forward to it absolutely it's been a blast we will be back in action the two of us next semester breaking down who knows what in sports but we've set the motto demand greatness and that trend will not stop no matter what we're breaking down we're demanding greatness that's how we roll rocking the night away on wicr